<laughs> so, what does it mean to free your voice? It means to be able to speak with an integrated voice, to have access to authenticity and power, and not to be governed by fear. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and virtual guests. How do people lose their voices? Most of the time, people lose their voice because of some trauma during childhood. It can be something as simple as not being seen, not being validated, or some other experience that makes them feel like they need to hide. And what happens is that there's a kind of split. So that there's a vulnerable part that I associate with the body that goes into hiding. And another part is enhanced or created. And I call the other part the warrior, although it can look like a sergeant. The warrior is saying, okay, you're too vulnerable to be out in the world, so I'm going to go out and do it for you. I'm going to figure out what these people are doing and how they're surviving and how they're making life work so that we'll be okay. A sergeant will say, I'm going to control everything. I'm going to make sure everything is on time. I'm going to make sure we're all perfect. And what happens is that there's a huge energetic imbalance. And one of the best ways I can describe that energetic imbalance, with apologies to Carmen right off the bat, because it's another business <laughs> printout, business center printout. This is not a, a PowerPoint. I wish it was. I wish I knew how. This is a photograph of a, a person going into the stream of life. And she's got like a tiger's tail around her neck. So she's using all of her energy to get where she's going, but she's got this weight that's dragging her down. And I think this is about the best photograph, the best example that I've ever seen of what that energy looks like. It looks like some part of you is just working so hard but another part isn't getting anywhere. It's the person who works all day long, and they don't like what they do, and they come home and they're absolutely exhausted. Because the part that gets put away is usually a young part. And it's usually the part that holds our joy, it holds our creativity, it holds our happiness. So when they're not integrated, then we have this big energetic split. How is it healed? Individually, it doesn't need medication. It doesn't need the long-term parenting of traditional therapy, although it can be healed that way. The way that I work with it is to slip underneath the rational mind. Because by the time we're adults, we're so incredibly capable and masterful at defending our raw places. We do it without even noticing most of the time. So the way to get to those raw places is to slip underneath what we usually do, what we usually think about. The first session when I'm working with people is an assessment, and that is I sit down with them and I make them very aware of what's going on, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what their gifts are, where they fall down and where they need help. And after that, I, I use a lot of different ways to work with people because people are so different and they all need different things. I like to use relaxation exercises and journey work so people go into another reality and in that reality they can lay it all out because they don't feel threatened, they don't feel afraid. The second way that I like to work is a technique um, by Fritz Perls. I think that's about 1980, if I'm right. Anyway, you have two chairs, and you can have different parts speaking to one another. And it's amazing that when you say, sit in this chair and only put your vulnerable part in this chair, and only put your warrior part in this chair, that that happens completely. And then you can really get to the issues that are going on and help this young part understand that there's been a time change and things are different and that they can feel safe in the world. So you've usually got 80% with the warrior, 20% with the vulnerable part, and 
the idea is to begin to literally shift energy to another part so there's more of a feeling of wholeness. Another way that I work is by asking people to write a fiction. I have a client now that literally has a very, very soft voice. She doesn't want to speak. She's had a lot of trauma. And so she's very angry on the inside because she doesn't have permission to say, this hurt me, this bothers me, I don't like it. And so she speaks with a whisper. And so I've said, write me a story, make it a fairy tale, and tell me how the main character, who's going to be <laughs> lost her voice. And she just handed that in, that in recently, and it's lovely. But I'm not going to have her write a story yet about how she found her voice, because I want her to sit with the loss and the complexity of what she's just written. Another, oh, there's a client named Hillary. And a lot of you think, well, people who have lost their voice are very quiet and shy. But Hillary was amazing. She wasn't Hillary Clinton, but she could have been. She was this young, beautiful, charismatic Jewish woman that was one of the smartest women that I've ever known. Very politically savvy. And everybody wanted her to run for the Senate and just to keep going. And she came to me because what she really wanted inside was to have a family and a little house and not to be the queen of the world. But her voice that was speaking to her, she wasn't listening to that voice either. So it's not just people who talk softly. It's also people who are getting lots of accolades in the world. And people, sometimes it's harder for those people to stop because everybody's saying, oh, you're great, you're doing wonderful, I'm so impressed, because there's all this societal pressure. So they need to step back. The third thing that I depend on when I'm working with somebody is what I call the mystery. And I will tell you a story of Amy which describes beautifully the mystery. Amy was given up for adoption when she was very young. She was left in an orphanage quite a while. And then finally, a, a couple came to adopt her. And after they got her home, the woman said, after about six months, I don't want this child anymore, take her back. And the husband said, she's not a loaf of bread, you can't just take her back, she's with us now. And so the woman said, well, then I won't have anything to do with her. You raise her if you want. And so there was a further abandonment that Amy felt, because the whole time she was growing up, the woman said, it's your fault because I'm not getting along with my husband. It's your fault because... So she incorporated the idea that everything in life was her fault. When we were in session, I said, Amy, I need you just to begin to say it's not my fault. And she said, no, I don't believe it. And I said, just begin to say it. Just, I want to hear the words just once. And so after a long time, she began to speak it. And she said, well, I don't believe it, Karen. And I said, that's okay. Just say it to yourself while you're doing the dishes. Say it to yourself while you're tending your children. Say it to yourself while you're going to bed. Just start to put those words in your body. And then she was driving home, and I got a call in about 15 minutes, and she said, something awful and wonderful has happened. She said, I got rear-ended. And the amazing thing was there was a policeman right there, and he came over to my car, and he looked in my window and he looked right at me and he said, don't worry, it's not your fault. Wow. Cool. <laughs> and then she said, but that wasn't the end of it. I called the insurance company. And the lady at the insurance company said, it's all right, dear. It's not your fault. And so she, was, she said, I'm, I'm just getting it. I'm just getting it now. So there's the healing that I can do. There's the healing that the person can do and then there's the healing that this mystery does as well. The other thing that's important is working in a group. And the importance of working in a group when you're trying to regain your voice is so that you don't vacate yourself while you're with other people. You don't abandon your process. You learn to speak. You learn presentation skills. You learn to write so that you can clarify what you want to say. 
And then, for those of you who have seen my writing and performance workshops, I just love it at the end because everybody goes through their own struggle just before the performance, but every single person afterwards says, Karen, I'm at a new level in my life. This is really exciting for me. This is another picture, and I someday I'll learn PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> this is a picture of the integration of power. Here we have the same person, but she's in her authority. She's in control. She knows what she's doing. So what does it mean to free your voice? It means to be able to speak from an integrated place with access to authenticity and power without being governed by fear. Mm -hmm.